as you know, Zoom, and that's in the building. I invite you to our first and third chapter Sunday morning this Sunday, the testimony of our Jesus Christ. This part of our service, our announcements, and our announcements are going to come from our sister, Sister Charlotte Hardy. We want to all ask him at 19 and on Zoom. Let us all read it with a hearty amen. 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 What would the Holy Temple of our Lord Jesus Christ of which that is placed in corporate? We'd like to welcome all saints, visitors, well wishes, and friends to our service this morning and say that you are only a stranger once, but in the sight of God, you are never a stranger. The visitor card that you receive from the usher, please fill it out and return to the usher. At the conclusion of these announcements, you will be given the, the opportunity to introduce yourself to the church. We welcome all of you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We pray that you will not only enjoy the service, but feel free to participate, to participate, and most of all, come again. Our church day begins each Sunday morning at 10 a.m. with Sunday school. This is the guiding point for all of our youth and continuation of learning for our older saints. We have a wonderful full Sunday school program under the direction of our pastor, Bishop William Jenkins. You all are invited to participate in our Sunday school program. Following Sunday school at 11.30 a.m. is our morning worship, which you are now in. Your Sunday bulletin provides our overview of today's service and activity, as well as ongoing ministry. If you do not have a place of worship and will want to fellowship with us or feel that the Lord is leading you to join us, please indicate it on your visit card. The announcements for today are... September 22nd, 27th, 2022, Noonday Prayer, exhorted with Elder Norman Williams. On September 28th, 2022, 7 p.m., Bible study on Zoom. The meeting ID is 619-613-459-8540. That's 613-459-8540. And the passcode is the number one, capital P, small t, Small A, capital B, capital W. On October 2nd of 2022, we will have our communion. On October 5th through the 8th, the International Women's Council and the International Bishop Council will be in Spottsburg, Marriott, South Carolina. Bishop and Mother Jenkins will be in the temple. On October the 28th of 2022 will be the missionary meeting. Thank you, Mother Evangeline Jenkins, Sister Charlotte Hardy, and Sister Kendra Washington for their labor and support of the fish dinner sale that was held on September the 24th. Also, a thank you to all of you who supported the dinner sale. If, we, if you would like to be a blessing to this ministry, we have an online giving, giving at Gillify Holy Temple of our Lord Jesus Christ at 519 South Pearl Street. Or you can do it with Cash App, Dollar sign Holy Temple 519. Holy Temple values, reverence for the house of God, respect for each other, friendliness supportive of ministry of salvation, faith, and stewardship. The power and the presence of the Holy Ghost is the difference between going to church and being in church. Again, welcome to Holy Temple, our Lord Jesus Christ, and may the Lord Jesus Christ continue to bless you all. Amen. Praise the Lord. And good morning, everyone. Good morning. Hallelujah. You all pray for me. One more time, Lord. One more time. One more time, Lord. Just one more time. One more time, Lord. One more time. He allowed us to come together one more time. Hallelujah, one more time, Lord. Just one more time. One more time. 
one more time, Lord, just one more time, one more time, Lord, one more time, he allowed us to pray together one more time, oh yes, one more time, Lord, this one more time, one more time, Lord, just one more time, one more time, Lord, one more time, he allowed us to sing together one more time, hallelujah, one more time, Lord, one more time, one more time, Lord, just one more time, one more time, Lord, one more time, he allowed us to come together one more time. Hallelujah. I must tell him, say, thank you, Jesus. He allowed me to come together this one more time. Yes, I'm going to take life for granted. I'm going to let Paul say, it's by grace through faith that we're saved and not of ourselves. A gift of God, not a work that any man can boast. Hallelujah. At this time, I'm going to introduce our speaker, Bishop William Jacob. Let all bring you with a hearty amen. 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 Greetings. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody 
do me like the Lord, can't nobody do me like Jesus, he's my friend, picked me up and told me to run on, he picked me up and told me to run on, picked me up and told me to run on, he's my friend, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Can't nobody do me like the Lord. Nobody. Said nobody. I look to my left. I look to my right. I look up behind. I look to the front. I just kept on turning. 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 Ain't nobody do me like Jesus. Ain't nobody do me like Lord. They can't nobody do me like Jesus. He's my friend. Very true indeed. Mother can't do me like Jesus. Amen. Father can't do me like Jesus. Friends can't do me like Jesus. That's why the songwriter say, can't nobody, nobody do me like Jesus. And we're so thankful today for all that has been said and done. And then the song that we sang and the praises that have gone up today. Amen. In our endeavor to say thank you, Jesus. Thank the Lord. And to praise his holy name. Amen, because he is just worthy to be praised. Worthy. Amen. God. We share that from our own experience that he is worthy yes, to be praised. Amen. We thank him for even last night's rest. Yes. Those that were able to rest. Right yes. there. And those that got up this morning. Yes, uh, sir. for the goodness of God. Wasn't for the grace and mercy. Thank Amen. God. We may still be sleeping. My God. And all the uh, reckless drivers that we encounter. On our way, praise the Lord God, shield us together. Yes, sir. And we did not ask God to put him in jail. We did not ask God to let him get a ticket. We just pray for him. Yes, sir. That their consciousness, that they would come and become aware, amen, that this kind of driving was not only injurious to others, but maybe injurious to themselves. Mm -hmm. Might even be a financial uh, impact on them. That's right. If you get a ticket. And I don't think tickets are too cheap to pay. Amen. But yet we're thankful. thankful. Amen. For the opportunity to be here again. Amen. And to fellowship one with another and to hear a word from on high. Amen. Amen. The word of God is light all by itself. It, it don't need no help, but we ask God for enlightenment and clarity of his word that we might apply it to our lives. Amen. 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 So it's a little briefly news for a talk today. I used the word briefly, but the Lord didn't briefly for you today. Amen. The road to restoration and salvation. The road to restoration and salvation. Praise the Lord. Restoration. That act of restoring something to a former condition. Mm -hmm. That means somewhere along the line it got off course or uh, or broken. Yeah. I remember my grandfather uh, on my mother's side, a man who had a tractor. I don't know how old it was, but it looked like it had been beaten, and worn, and used for nothing. It was just thrown in uh, the barn, and just all kinds of stuff was, was on it. I would jump on it every night and then, playing with it, or playing on it, rather. But one day he thought about restoring that tractor. Hmm. Everybody thought it was pretty. It's rusted. The parts are probably no longer in place or hard to get. But his mind was set on restoring it, or putting it back together so it would be operational, because he needed a, a tractor 
one he had other than that was now down. Amen. Mm. And so he went to work. Went to work. Filling pots and this and pots and that and getting pots and neighbors, tractors and stuff until after months of working with it, he got it together. It didn't look new, but it ran. Well. It did the job that he wanted it to do. I understand in those days, as my grandmother told me, that it was cheaper to fix that one than to get the new one that he had, or the other one that he had fixed. And it wasn't new though. And the old one seemed to work better than the new. That, that, that doesn't seem right though. Amen. But he restored that. Amen. He had a reason, amen, for restoring it. It had a purpose. Amen. It once used, but now worn out, but yet it still can serve a purpose. To bring it back to its former position or, or a former ability to do what it used to do. Now, of course, uh, in our lives now, we understand as we have matured in age, we can't go back and do those things that we did at 21 or 35 or even 50. But we are still useful in the eyes of the Lord. We still have gifts and talents that can be used to the glory of God. Is that right? Amen. So we all have had that experience of restoring something. Even when something has been broken, something that we value. Amen. We get some Gorilla Glue and some old kind of tapes and stuff to put it back together uh, so that it'll look good. We know not to touch it too much because it's fragile now. Amen. But it does retain its glow and its glory because we don't just throw it in the trash because it's valuable to us. Yes, yes. Even if just to look at it because it has a memory to it. And it, it means something. Whoever gave this to me. And many things that we have that have been passed down through generations that we still have a hold to. And our grandkids sometimes get to running through the house. Yes, they do run through the house. Whether you're looking or not, they do run. And sometimes they will inadvertently hit something and boom, here it goes. Thank the Lord. And, and, and yes, it breaks or it cracks in it. And we might take it out on them at first, but we, we grab our composure, knowing that it wasn't nothing intentional that they did. Is that right? I guess not. Amen. 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 But yet we will do our best to examine it to see whether or not we can put it back together. Amen. To restore it. Amen. Amen. Yes, we do that. And, and, and it is a constant thing that we do because we value it. If we did not have value, if it did not have value, we would toss it aside. We would discard it. We would go on about our business and probably buy another. Amen. But that one particularly has some meaningfulness for us. Amen. But then when we come to uh, the, the, the thought is uh, restoration and salvation. Mm -hmm. That means getting rid of the weight that weighs us down, that we can be restored to our former glory to God. Well, in the beginning, God created us how in the likeness of his all oh, it without sin and without malice and without jealousy, all of those things that have crowded our lives. Amen? Yes, uh, yes. He made a way for us to again be restored and amen to come back to him, to, to that status or position that he would have us to be. Yes, amen. Yes. Saved from amen the sins and, and the wrath of God because of our sins. We we truly don't want to experience those things. So we want to be, as somebody said, on the good side of God. Amen. The way to be on the good side of God is to be obedient unto his word. You remember we follow David said, that word have a hidden in my heart that might not sin against thee. The word become a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. That word is what I need. It's most securing to me to know, amen, that I got it. Amen. Uh, and having faith in it that it will do what? God said it will do, and it will not return as a boy. Is that right? Thank you, Jesus. Salvation is being saved from the wrath of God through obedience unto his word, through baptism, or rather through repentance and baptism, and being filled with his spirit and then living in the day of your life according to what? His holy word. Amen. Amen. Find in First Thessalonians one and ten said, and to wait for the Son 
from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. Amen. Only if we have our abode continually in his word. It is about uh, being redeemed. It is about being restored. It is about being brought back in line with God's holy word. Amen. And for it is by grace that we are saved and not ourselves. It is but a gift of God. Amen. He did it all for us by going to Calvary and letting them share his blood. Thank you, Jesus, because without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Amen. It was the greatest expression of love that mankind, amen, have ever experienced. Amen. He loved us that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And so believers in him should not perish but have but everlasting life or eternal life. We know, amen, that to build anything is very difficult. Mm -hmm. uh, what we set in mind to build a, a storage in the backyard and Therefore, the ground must be cleared away and, and level, praise God. So before you can even talk about putting concrete down or whatever kind of foundation that you're going to use, amen, it's going to cost not only in financial business, it's going to cost in labor. Somebody must have the expertise. Someone must have the talent, amen, to know what to do. And everybody don't know how to lay concrete. Is that right, Uncle William? Amen. I know I don't. Thank you, Jesus. So I would have to have someone with the knowledge to do just that. Amen. So building anything is difficult, but to destroy it, it's so simple and so easy. Lord have mercy. We have destroyed many things that were hard putting together. Amen. Even rebuilding is going to cost something. That's right. Amen. When you're there to put it together. Amen. We've broken many things. We've broken friendship. Amen. We know how Difficulty in us putting it together, Lord have mercy, amen, because we have different values and different customs and different attitudes, but we want to bind our, ourselves together to be called friends, is that right? Amen, we want to be accepting of each other for who they are and not to make them out of what we want them to be, amen. Yeah, we got to come over this and come over that and cope with this and cope with that because the objective is to have that person as a friend. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So building isn't easy, but it's worthwhile, isn't it? And so having a person that you can have, say, a good confidant, amen, is pleasing and settling, amen, to one. But you've labored to get it to where it is a friendship. To have a friend first, you must do what? Make yourself friendly. Thank you, Lord. Amen. But to destroy that relationship or destroy that friendship sometimes may only take one word. Sometimes it might just take a man an activity. There are many things simply that can friendship has been, been destroyed over something like a, a smile or I heard someone said you said this about me. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so and we've been through this course of life where, amen, friendship have been mistakenly for whatever reason severed because of this or that. In many cases, it's a rumor that is untrue, well, amen, but we act upon that because I guess we want to defend ourselves. Mm -hmm. But to build that back is not going to be easy. When trust is broken, when trust is damaged, it is hard to be repaired, but not impossible. Amen. Because all things are possible to them that believe. We ought to rebuild Put this thing back together. My grandfather wanted to put that tractor back together. It didn't look the same as it was when it was brand new, but it was operational. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. I said it was operational. In the process, amen, of rebuilding, amen, we must commit to making the sacrifice. You know, whatever it takes to bring it back together, whatever it takes to restore this friendship, whatever it takes to restore this, I'm willing to invest therein. If you are not willing to invest and sacrifice, amen, it's not going to be put back together. It's not going to be restored. We can speak in terms, amen, of those natural things that we encounter as well as those spiritual things, amen, because our hearts are broken on many occasions, amen, and it seems hard to put back together. 
Amen. You even had this experience when someone has violated your trust. It's hard to trust them again. And we can have a thousand and one excuses for why I should not trust him or her anymore. It's broken, praise God. You know how hard it, or how much work was it invested in putting it together, but now it is severed. Amen. You yearn sometimes to get back together, but not willing to sacrifice that what is needed to get it back together. Sometimes all that is needed is just to say, I'm sorry. Sometimes that works more than the lingering thought of who did it and who started. Amen. So we need forgiveness and faith in God. Amen. To move forward. Amen. To get over this, to climb this, to get back on that road. Amen. That we need to get on. Amen. We're on that highway now that leads to the kingdom of God. Thank you, Jesus. We got there through repentance and being baptized in his name. And we got there through being filled with his spirit. <clears throat> Thank you, Jesus. And we want to keep it that way. So we need forgiveness Amen. and faith in God. Amen. That we might have a turnaround in our lives. When we recognize that we need a turnaround, it requires faith in God who is the only one that is able to forgive us and restore us. I talk about our soul, our relationship with him, amen, that took a while to build. Thank you, Jesus. We just didn't jump on board with Jesus. There's a lot of things that we have to do to get in line with what he expects of us. We have to lay aside the weights and seem that do so easily to set us, and we are still on that road of laying aside those things that get in our way. Praise God from being the example that God would have us to be in righteousness, amen, and true holiness. Yes, we have been given a clean heart, a right spirit, amen, and God wanted to continue to stay that way. When we rise in the morning until, amen, we lay down at night, that all that we have done to that day have been in righteousness and true holiness. But every now and then there is a stumble. Every now and then there is a fall. Every now and then there is an injury. Something that pulls you away, praise God, from your steadfastness. Amen. But by your faith in God, your trust in his word, you can get back on board. Amen. I said you can get back on board and be renewed, be refreshed. We have revivals, praise God. And sometimes revivals seem to just be a regular service, praise God. It has a purpose. It has an intent. Amen. God set it in, in motion. Amen. This is what is to be accomplished. And the assurance that his word will not return more. Someone has to be affected by that word. Amen. The preached word that God gives us. Amen. Someone has to be affected by it. Not just someone, but from the pulpit to the back door or to the, to the front door. Everyone. Amen. Must be able to feast on the word of God. He knows exactly what we are in need of. And he's the only one that is able to supply with all of our needs. According to his riches in glory. Is that right? Amen. Thank you, Jesus. So when uh, we look at mankind uh, from the onset, he has been in violation, amen, of what God expected him, amen, to be. Even from Adam, praise God, the first man that God created. Hallelujah, Jesus, from the dust of the earth. Amen. And the, God, the, the God is that God gave him to manage a garden. Amen. And those two trees, he told them one, thou shalt not touch it. That the day that you do eat thereof, you shall surely die. It wasn't him, amen, that started this ball to rolling, but he got on board anyhow. Amen. For whatever reason, he got on board violating, breaking the rule that God has set in place. And the result that God said, the day that you eat thereof, ye shall surely die. It became a separation between the God that created him and the God that he depended on for life, for breath, for health. Amen. Was now severed. Man, amen, was making by the sweat of his own brows when he could have had an easy life by staying, amen, in the embrace of God. Thank you, Jesus. So it's not just a new, amen, phenomenon, but it's one that is of age old. We've been falling and, 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 and violating God's standards for, for years or for generations. Amen. amen. Sometimes family after family carry on the same cut and the tradition that are in offense to God. Thank you, Jesus. But it's not his will. He is always trying and putting, not trying, but always doing that which is necessary to bring us back, to reconcile us back to him, to restore us back to that form of glory or that form of image that we had in him. Amen. As we look at Israel, how many times they have faltered 
God always sent someone, a prophet, praise God, to let them know what's going to happen. Amen. Some admonishment upon them. Amen. To get them to see their fault, to, to see their error. Amen. Of falling in line with the false God. And before you know it, they get back on board. But always I found that in every instance with Israel, there was always a remnant. Amen. Those that stood fast, I ain't going nowhere. I'm going to hold on to God's unchanging hand. You can do what you will, but I'm going to be steadfast and unmovable. Go if you will, but I'm going to stay. And Joshua said to Israel, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to stay on board. Thank you, Jesus. So now through the years, we've seen God restoring it. And the method that God used to restore us, pray God, from the nation of Israel uh, down in ye of land because of the sin. Hallelujah, it may take a long time, but God had a plan that will work up. For way over 400 years, they labored in sin, amen, in slavery there in Egypt. But God had a plan, a plan to rescue them, a plan to restore them, amen, that they might again have trust in the Alpha and Omega, amen, the beginning and the end. The God that called them to the seed of Abraham, that God that promised them to be a nation, praise God, that they would be able to get back on board. Thank the Lord. And if they refuse to get back on board, thank you, Jesus, God still has a plan. Amen. His plan was to wake up Moses, praise God, who was once there in Egypt and know the plan and know the way. He wasn't really interested in serving God, but when he had his confrontation with God and encounter with God, he was convinced that there is a God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. The God plan was that they would be, amen, restored, amen, to prominence, amen. But as y'all know, it wasn't easy then. Amen. Israel had doubts along the way. Even when they were getting ready to cross Jordan, praise God, they had doubts about their ability. But God knows what to do and when to do it. And God knows how to do it. His means of restoring us may not be a comfortable one. First, we must get our attention, pray God, and that we must recognize that we have sinned against him. We have fallen by the wayside. We're not where we used to be. Amen. The song that we sang, amen, the hand clapping ain't like it used to be. The praises ain't like it used to be. Sometimes it's just uh, the expression rather than the emotional excitement that goes with it. You know how you feel when you're excited about something. We should be excited about serving God. We should be excited about all that he's doing, amen, for us in our lives. Amen. When mankind have tainted all that God has done in his laws, he still loves them. Enough to set a plan in motion, amen, for their deliverance and for their restoration. Thank you, Jesus, that that power of sin is broken so that he can remold them again, put them back on the potter's wheel, and let him shake them all over again. Amen. Take out those things that are yet offensive to him. Amen. Those things that will ruin their character, that will destroy their relationship. Amen. With their God. It has been going on for years, and it's still going on. Amen. But God is the one that restored, amen, through the flood, he re restored, amen, through many battles with the, uh, uh, other nations or Gentile nations, amen, he got his eyes open that they would be restored or be returned unto him, become the people of God, the people that have faith in him, the people that trust in him, the people that are willing to wait on him. Amen. Until, amen, his, their change come, and that change come from him. Amen. Whatever we happen, whatever happens to us, praise God. We must remember, we must be reminded, praise God, amen, to stay on board. Uh, Paul said, I'll let nothing separate me, amen, from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen. So we are in that state today where we find, praise God, many that are falling away, amen, from the word of God, from the guidelines, from the stand of God. And God has said, I'm standing on the wall, amen, with a plumb line, and that plumb line measures righteousness, uh, amen, and true holiness. Uh, when you're in line, a perfect perpendicular line, please God, you're straight. Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, and when you are out of that line, amen, you're out of focus. And many times we become out of focus, praise God. Uh, but our God is able to bring back our memory and get us back in focus, get us back in line. Amen. But you got to want to get on that line. Uh, you got to want to get back in line. Uh, when, when Jerusalem was destroyed, uh, amen, by Babylonian God, uh, got a man by the name of 
uh, Nehemiah, amen, to go back and rebuild the wall. Amen. The people there had a mind to build. They had a perfect mind to build now. Amen. To restore what had been torn down. To restore what had been broken. Now. God Almighty, when you have a mind to do the will of God, God will give you what you need. I said, he'll give you the strength and the guidance. He'll give you the blueprint that is needed to bring things back together. Is that right? Thank you, Jesus. Uh, and if God gave me my instructions, uh, amen, to rebuild the wall, uh, God has given us instruction too, amen, to be obedient to his word, uh, amen, because to disobey God, uh, amen, is again God's will, uh, because obedience is still better, amen, than a sacrifice, uh, amen, to align ourselves with God, uh, hallelujah, is to our good uh, and not our bad, uh, amen, because we want to hear him say that day, uh, well done, that good and faithful servant. Huh? Amen. That road to restoration. Huh? And that road to salvation. Huh? Amen. First of all, we must be like the part of the sun and recognize where we are. Huh? Recognize how far we have strayed away. Huh? How far we have fallen from God. Huh? Many times I remember huh, having what they call a shopping list. Huh? But now you can put it on your little notepad. Huh? Amen. On your iPhone. Huh? Thank you, Jesus. And when you go there, those things that are on the list, amen, the other thing that distracts you, amen, it looks good, it sounds good, or, or the price is right, you're being deceived, you're being distracted, amen, from your initial purpose. So you must recognize, praise God, that I'm not to be led astray, little by little, that we sound good, it's not always good, that we look good. It's not always good. But when you recognize, amen, what the enemy is doing, trying to blind you and bind you, that your relationship with God, amen, will be crippled. He does not care, hallelujah, how much you hurt or how much you suffer, as long as you're not doing, amen, the will of God. So we must recognize that I've fallen by the wayside. We must recognize a button a little weed. We must recognize hallelujah and that mirror that we look in to see where we are is the word of God. It's not what somebody said, but what the word of God said. Study to show that's the proof of the God. A workman that need not be ashamed. Or rightly dividing the word of truth. When my John said, You shall know the truth, praise God. And the truth shall make you free. To recognize when you look in the word where I drifted from. What? Hallelujah. This did not bother me. But now it is. What? People staring at me didn't bother me. But now it does. Hallelujah. We must examine ourselves to see where we are. Are we? Hallelujah. On that line. Yeah. That is straight and narrow. Or have we fallen wide? Or fallen aside? Good God Almighty. And can I see that we have fallen? Good God Almighty. Satan will blind you and bind you so you can't get loose. But oh, we must remember his word is for us. Greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. You have the power to refocus and get back on board. Isn't that right? Many times we've heard preachers falling by the wayside for a pretty face or feel the lucrative. Good God Almighty. But oh, God can restore him. Yeah, but will we accept him? There's another matter. God wanted his word to be preached in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, and exalt with all long suffering. 
no matter who it is that stumble, yeah, and fall, those that are strong are helping them to get up and get back in line. Hallelujah. Where the word says so. Let those that are strong bear the infirmity of those that are weak. That road, that road to get on, that road that leads to restoration. Thank you, Jesus. It's not an easy road, but it's one that is valuable. Sinner will be at you for their return. You remember when he is cast out? Yeah, keep going and get the seven more that worked in himself. The second state of that man will be worse than the first. But keep your nose close, keep your house clean. Hide ourselves in the word. Hallelujah. God will lead you. God will guide you. When you fall, get up. Hallelujah. If he deceives you, recover and rebound. Let him know you did it once, but you won't get me again. He's not in that man. I'm wise to you. That road, that road that we need to stay on is being revived, being refreshed, being renewed. Good God Almighty. Yeah, yeah. Satan has many ways of pulling you off the straight and narrow. When we pay attention to him, the word assures us, yield not to temptation. The God Almighty, he'll use deception. What it looks like ain't what it is. The light looks brighter. Saints, hallelujah. When you look at saints or sinners, look like they're doing so well. They got the big house and many cars. They can take a vacation anytime they want. Seeing that they're living what they call in the old days. The life of Raleigh. The God Almighty. It looked good, but in results, if they don't have Jesus, Lord have mercy, if they don't have Jesus in hell, they don't open their eyes. No one will be able to help them now. Be God Almighty, you may be living on poor street. Yay! And I heard one person say, and beg of that new, but you got Jesus. And on that boulevard, he supplies all of your needs. So don't let him yeah, deceive you. Be not deceived. Our God is not more. And then I show you, if the scepter don't work, you'll try distraction. Hallelujah. Does anyone enjoy riding with the driver that is distracted? That lead off. He's driving. They're looking in the back seat. Talking to those in the back seat. Hallelujah. I've been in one. And I felt so uncomfortable. All I can do is pray. Yeah. Better keep his eye on the road. Every time you do doing this or that, that distraction methods or strategy, he will use, yeah, to get you out of focus. So you must be aware of these tools that he used. Then he'll tell you that the word ain't right. God didn't really mean that. That state of doubt and unbelief, he will try to use. When we sing that song, no doubts. There is no doubt in my mind. I believe every word of God. And I trust him for it. Yeah, yeah. 
He can lead you to distrust one another. He can lead you to stop communicating with one another. He can lead you to not helping one another. When the Bible tells you you ought to be helper one to another. Don't let him call you to fall. Amen. By distrusting one another. Put your trust in the law and leave it there. Lean not to your own understanding. But keep your trust in God. And another biggie that we always fall or stumble over is unforgiveness. Sometimes we draw a line in the sand. I ain't going to move until they come to me and tell me that they're sorry. And when they say it, I got a feeling that they mean it. And if I feel they don't mean it, the battle goes on. Say to rejoice when we will divide it. But God said, a house divided again it. It cannot stand. Isn't that right? We must be willing and ready to forgive one another and to get on board with God Almighty. Oh, God, let Him restore us. Refresh us, Lord. Get us back in line. I want to hear you say, Well done. The good and faithful servant. And sometimes. He'll throw fear on you. But we must remember what the word of God says. God has not given us the spirit of fear. Isn't that right? But a power and a love and of a sound mind. Then he said, Love, let love be without the simulation. A whore that which is evil and clean on the that which is good. Hallelujah. Don't let him lead you astray. Be wise to his tactics. Be strong in the word. And in the power of your God, let him know you can knock on my door. But I refuse to let you in. Hallelujah. I remember the old folks saying, if you give him an inch, he'll take a mile. And serve his seed and old days. Sing a song. Don't let the devil ride. If you let him ride, he will surely try to drive. For the warning, don't get on board. But if you should be deceived or distracted, if you fall about and doubt God a bit, if you learn, slide in the distrust, unforgiveness resting on your shoulder, good God Almighty, you still can be restored. Long as your eyes open and you on top of ground, you can still be refreshed. Good God Almighty, He died that you might have life and have it more abundantly. He died that you could be a witness for Him, a light that seated on the hill that cannot be hid. His word is not going to change. His word is right by itself. To God Almighty, we must recognize and must be able to recognize our own tendency, our own vulnerability. And when we find there's a leak in the ceiling, we just don't talk about it or don't just dismiss it. We call the insurance and get someone to fix that leak. If you don't get it fixed, it will be worse the next time. Isn't that right? You must recognize where you're weak at and where you're weak at. Build it up and you'll be strong. Hallelujah. Let those that are weak claim their strength in their faith in God. Train up. Yeah. You're not going to win. I got my whole arm of God. I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. Recognize your weaknesses. Thank you, Jesus. 
Uh, Satan knows where they are. Uh, he knows you get upset. Uh, yeah, but someone owe you money uh, and don't pay you back. Uh, the day that they promise you, uh, Hallelujah, Jesus. Uh, he knows uh, that feeling you have uh, that someone don't like you. You uh, don't like it. Uh, he knows uh, how to get you riled up. Uh, good God Almighty. Uh, yeah, uh, if you are well. I, that I'm too sensitive to that. I, I gotta have it build up. I, give me strength, oh Lord, I, not to get out of character. I, give me strength, oh Lord, I, to be that light. The sin is gonna heal, that cannot be healed. I, give me, Lord, I, that strength to flee I, the temptation. I, that's whatever coming before me. I, help me, Lord, I, to resist the devil. I, that he'll flee from me. I, hallelujah. I, help me, Lord, I, to be refocused on free and on your word. I, good God Almighty. I, yeah. I, Lord, I must admit, I, I'm not where I want to be. I, but look out. I'm so glad. I, I'm not where I used to be. Isn't that right? Oh, hallelujah. To get back on that road that leads to restoration and restoring in the Lord. We must have that mind to hear his word. Yeah. Sometimes we don't want to hear it because I'm bitter. Sometimes we don't want to hear it because we don't want to believe that we've slipped in that state. Oh, Lord. But God loved you enough like it is Israel to send the prophet. Oh. I go let them know I, I've seen their faults. I, oh Lord, I, and I'm giving them a chance. Everybody to get back on board. I, hear the word of God. I, the day that you hear my voice, I, he's a heart, not your heart. I, hallelujah, Jesus. I, that word, that word, that word, I, the word of God. I, we'll believe in I, that it is God's word. I, add nothing to it. I, it ain't nothing away. I, the word I, is bitter and sweet. I, for all the results that are all I, is a child of God I, that is holding on I, to God's unchanging hand. I, believe in the word. I, put your faith in the word. I, that word I, will convict you. I, it will assure you. I, yeah, you might look good in the mirror, I, but you don't look good inside. I, you need to have a smile on your face. I, but we don't want an artificial smile, do we? I, we want it to be real. I, that's why we sing that song, Real, Real. I, Jesus is real to me. I, the word, I, like a fire in talent, I, will assure you I, I can burn it all up. I, I can get it all up. Ha, and get you back on board. Ha, refresh you and vitalize you. Ha, once we hear that word, it is convict us. Ha, then we come to that point of reading that the prodigal son. Ha, I've sinned against heaven. Ha, and I've sinned against my father. Ha, I know it now. Ha, it's not my mother's fault, not my father's fault, not my brother's fault. But it's me, Lord. I did it and I'm sorry for it. I regret doing it, oh God. And we say, Lord, forgive me. Ha, and God, we will forgive you. For the Lord is nigh unto them that all of a broken heart and say with such a deep of a contrite spirit. The sacrifice of God or a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, oh God, that will not despise. Out of all of that, we must have faith in his word. Because without faith it is impossible to please God. When we stumble along the way, don't be satisfied with stumbling while you stumble. Find out what caused you to stumble and fix it. Give God, ask God for the strength and the knowledge to fix it so I won't stumble again. You're in a battle for your soul, a battle for your relationship with God. Don't let Satan deceive you and don't let him distract you. Don't let him use any tool or strategy to pull you away from your steadfastness. 
As a song where I said, I made a vow to the Lord, and I won't take it back. But it's best not to make a vow to God and then promise it or break it. So, Lord, help me, O oh God, to keep your word. Help me to live by your word. If I have to do hardness, help me, Lord, and do hardness as a good soldier. Because building a relationship with you is not easy, but it's worth going to do. I gotta get rid of that. Gotta get rid of that. Gotta stop doing that. They have a relationship with you. But it don't take a whole lot to break that relationship. Unless we're rooted and grounded in the word and we're strong. Amen. 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 Satan ain't going to give up on you. Amen. He'll go through your children. He'll go through your finances. He'll go through your debtors. He'll, anything he can use to get you get you offline or off course with God. He'll do it. He'll broken up more marriages than God has put together, it seems like. So he Jesus. Broke up more friendships than we can even put together. Thank you, Jesus. It does not feel good, Bishop Cain, with a sad wife in your house. Right. I think you can do that. It might not exist in your place. It does not feel good when your wife is unhappy. My dad told me, happy wife, happy home. Amen. And they say nothing about being happy husband. Happy wife, happy home. But we thank God that we're on the road continually getting on that road to be restored, that something that's short, something that's missing, something that is not fully developed, amen, that we have to allow God in to do the work on us, that we can be what he wants us to be, amen. That road to restoration and salvation is here now. Brother Williams. Praise the Lord once again to each and every one that's here on the 19th South Pearl Street. And I'm turning with us all of As Bishop was speaking, the Lord reminded me, and he brought my attention out there, 55 and 8. My thoughts ain't your thoughts. My ways ain't your ways. High the heaven is from the earth of the sun. He brought to me an instant dip in the Bible. The first one is Acts, the fifth chapter. Get them out of the surprise. What we might call a little now. They told them they're going to do everything with this sort of property for them. But after they went and sold it, they kind of changed, had a change of mind. So they did bring some of it back, but they kept that part. And, and then when, 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 uh, when they uh, told them, when Peter asked them, how much did you sell it for? And they said, yeah, they dropped dead. But the Lord brought to my attention about King David. In 2 Samuel, the, the, the 11th chapter, verse 14, David laid with Uriah's wife and got her pregnant. So he tried to encourage Uriah to go get in the bed with her, but he wouldn't. He said, I don't feel right going to get in the bed with my wife. My, brother, my brother's out there fighting and everything. So David wrote a suicidal note in 2 Samuel. The letter, chapter, verse 14. He gave that suicidal note to, uh, to, to Uriah. To go get a joy. To put it on the front line and to withdraw back from it. If we were sitting in a jury and we'll be just like uh Barabbas and Jesus, if Pilate would have come and asked us who we want to let go, Ananias Sapphires or David, we'd have said Ananias Sapphires. That was just a little lie he told, but David. Uh, 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 commit adultery with this man's wife and he had him killed. But that's what God was showing. My thoughts ain't your thoughts. My ways ain't your ways. And, and the Lord, he'll restore ain't nothing to He wanted to remind us what he said in Jeremiah 32 and 17. Ain't nothing too hard for God. Mm -hmm. The Lord brought to my attention <clears throat> about Ezekiel. In the 37th chapter, Ezekiel, beginning at verse 1, he told me, go down here in a valley of dry bones. He said, and prophesy to them dry bones. Uh -huh. He said, and, and ask the bones, can they, he must first ask them, can these bones live? He told him, speak to them. He said, before he know it, Ezekiel said, the bones begin to shake. I'll lead you to the most high God. And they began to come together. And he said, in the 37th chapter, in verse 8, 
sinew, sin, sinew began to grow on these bones, and these bones became light. So God wants to ain't nothing too hard for God. Too hard. And that's why he says, seek the Lord. Squat the breast in your body. Seek the Lord when you need fight. Call him when you need And that's why he had Isaiah, the prophesied in the first chapter of the day. He said, but come now. Let us do. It don't matter how dry you live, how fragile, or how long you've been in the state that you was in. The harder is waiting to put you back together again. But we must come now. Come now. Don't your sin be a scar. He's going to make up. It's white as snow. Yeah. The dirtiest thing you don't got yourself, Jesus said, he wanted to remind us he'll make it come. Mm -hmm. You make the hardest thing you done got into. Because, you know, crimson is hotter than iron. He said, I'll make it as well. You know that the softest material in the earth. I love. And snow is the purest and the whitest material. And that's what you're going to make you feel. And that's why Jesus said in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away from you. And that's why he had Bishop to read in Isaiah 55 and 11. That, you know, my word that go forth out of my mouth will not return to me born. Jesus said in the first of John, chapter 1, verse 9, if you confess your sins, I, he didn't say man, the pastor, the apostle, the bishop, but he said, I am faithful and I am just. I will give you and I will clean you of all your own sin, but righteousness. And he said in 2 Corinthians, the first chapter, verse 20, not so, but all the promises of God are yea and amen. And he told Peter to write in 2 Peter, the third chapter, verse 9, God is not slack concerning his promise. So come now, here at 519 Psalm. Firstly, somebody want to be prayed for, uh, and, and you, 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 want to, you want to do just like James 5, and, 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 and fourth, he said, if any sick among you, send call for the elders and let them lay hands on them and say the prayer of the righteous will prevail as well. So come now. Come now. And I'm going to pray with you on Zoom. But come now, come now and reason with Jesus. Yield not to temptation or yield any sin. He he will help you or some of us to win. Fight man but flee on work, dark passion seduce. Then look ever to Jesus and he will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you or Comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Jesus is willing to aid you, and he will carry you through. Shun evil companions, bad language to sting. It's God name, holy reverence, nor take it in vain. Be thoughtful and honest, be kind-hearted and true. Then look ever to Jesus, and he will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you, or comfort, strengthen, and keep you. Jesus is willing to aid you, and he will carry you through. To him who overcometh, God giveth the crown. If through faith we will conquer, though often cast down. To him who is our Savior, our strength will renew. If we would look ever to Jesus, and he will carry you through. Ask the Savior to help you, or come for strength on and keep you. Jesus is willing to aid you, and he will carry you through.
major problem in here, let's touch in the green. Dear sweet Christ Jesus, our Lord, our beautiful Lord, and our beautiful Savior, and our beautiful Redeemer, and our beautiful Son, come and pay our beautiful Son to Him. We come in and ask you, dear God, to mold us this evening and make us in Jesus' name. You are the Father, we decree that we all will be virtue, we all be faithful and obedience, that God will seek to be the best children in this earth for you. Help us all to come together for one more body in the body of another day, consume one another. Help us 100% to open ourselves to you. Let you teach us how to pray together, seek your face together, come together, that God may hear from heaven, forgive our sins, and not the Lord. Clean all us a clean heart as we depart today. Put the right thing up to do your will and not your will. Help us to be helpful one to another. Help us, dear God, for our brothers overtaking the fall who are spiritual. Let us go to him with the spirit and meet through the storm, dear God. And sit ourselves as we all so be tempted, dear God. And we want to pray, dear God, for every man this evening and every woman, every girl and every boy, every human being. If death's going to end us, so we pray again, take our body and save our soul. And let those different women will become saints, dear God. Let the words that be in our mouth and message for heart. Help us to let it be accepted by sight. He asked us to be our Redeemer and help us to trust in you with all our heart. Lean not to our own stand, but always love to pass. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Right into the hands. Excuse me, into the hands of Bishop King. Let us greet him with a hearty amen. 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 Praise the Lord. I'm not Bishop King, <laughs> but Jenkins. Amen. For our Facebook audience, amen. And to each and every one of you here today. We thank God for you visiting with us today. Amen. Hallelujah. To sing, to pray, amen, to say amen in the service of the Lord. Amen. We thank and praise God for Dennis uh, Evans today and for Esther and Marcia and Williams Wow. Amen. For Keith Williams, Missionary Dolores Griffin, Sister Diane Garrett, Bishop Connell Williams Sr., Melanie Peterson, our Everett Jenkins, amen, my son, or my grandson, <laughs> amen, and Beverly Taylor, amen. God bless you this afternoon, and uh, we can, if all possible, tune in with us again, in Jesus' name. God bless you all. Into the hands of Bishop Kane now. Amen. We're standing, amen. We thank God for each and every one, amen. 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 Pray that the strength of God keep you and may his hand continue to guide you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. amen.